<laughs> Wait, how old are you, Matt? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Coach's Corner. We are, yeah, Tim, shut the fuck up. We are live as fuck on Instagram. Um, and we got questions ready to answer. <laughs> Aldair is live. Uh, Al, Al Dare is with us from Colombia right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't gotten raped yet. Or, or <laughs> murdered. Or oh my god. It's Colombia, man. You never know. Where's Milf Lover? That's all that matters on these lives. <laughs> yeah. Where's somebody message Milf Lover? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got one of my old clients, Kimmy from Australia, is on too. There you go. Man, got, Tim's all over the map. Yeah. Tim, I want you to know audience. that I took your advice and I told Marina, I moved my check-in time back to 10 a.m. Nice, nice, nice. Keep working it back little by little. People are going to ignore it. 5 a.m. You know what I mean? Yeah. Marina actually checked in on time for the first time ever this week. What hey. time? I uh, take she's probably check-ins late. It's probably like time, 10. but I don't send them. <laughs> what the Because so, the- then they get distracted and I'm like, ah. The dog. Somebody, this, some client emailed me today because last week I dug in. Well, I dug in them three weeks in a row. And I'm like, listen, dude, I know we're like, you're new. It's like only two, three months, but you have, you've, you've taken 11 check-ins now with me. All 11 have come at least an hour and a half past 11 a.m. And I said, the next one, I'm not answering until the following week. And yeah, he, he literally sent it today at 1059. I'm huh. like, dude, you're a dick. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're such a dick. <laughs> All right, who's going first here? Who's starting? Marina. Ye- Ladies yeah. first. Okay. Um, I got one from Sam. Matt, you're Sam. Um, this is an easy one. What What's the lowest your calories were during any prep? Um, Tim, was my second? Did I get lower in my second prep than I did in this recent one? Do you remember? Uh, no, definitely not. Right? Okay. So my, no. uh, oh, should I say the number? I, I don't give a fuck. It hurts. Okay. So yeah. the lowest I got just for like a week, a week, week and a half was like yeah. 750 calories. Woo. But hey, oh, then the, the tie-ins were it's crispy. Yeah. We definitely got what we were aiming for. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. It hurt. Mm-hmm. It really, really hurt. That was the point where like doing everything hurt yeah that's fucked like oh it was not good um the lowest mine got i think for 16 1700 ish yeah mine was about the same for last prep for a couple of days my my get down to without without a doubt it's always going to happen every single time doesn't matter if I'm 140 pounds or 180 pounds on stage. I am going to hit 1,200 calories at around four weeks out, and I'm going to have to live at that 1,200 calories for the last four weeks of dieting. And there's just nothing I can do about it. That's that's with you know everything else maxed out from a fat burning perspective. Cardio at two sessions a day. Guys- I'm always going to be there. Okay. Always. Okay. It's the same thing on the opposite end for me though, where it's like I I can't. I'm not going to put on any size. After like whatever, like once I go from 1200 calories all the way up to like whatever, 3,500 calories, whatever I've gained in that time frame, which is usually just that base weight that I usually am in the off season. That's it. I'm maxed there. Sure. And the Thank only you. way for me to put on more tissue thereafter, or put on any more scale weight, honestly, is to drive up those calories to something that's just ridiculous and hard to maintain. I just have a, a very adaptive metabolism one way or another. That's a hundred calories. It sounds miserable. Yeah, it is one way or the other. That's why I tell everybody like bodybuilding sucks in the sense that it's like, there's only like three months out of the year where my diet is actually like enjoyable the rest of the year, whether it's off season or contest prep is just flat out miserable. Yeah. I'm already Mm -hmm. sick of eating and I've only been back to pushing like for two months now, like eight, seven seven weeks. I fucking hate it. Although I do. I mean, I got lucky. I got a cereal in my diet. Yeah, so off season eating always sucks way worse than prep for me. Even though I get down to twelve hundred calories, it's brutal. The way that you feel is brutal, but it's actually like it's not enjoyable at that point. But it, it is enjoyable when you get to that place of prep where you actually look forward to every meal. You know what I mean? Like you can eat yeah. anything and enjoy it. Like I, that's that when I, it's like, I never ate fish until I became a bodybuilder. It was it was in prep? You know what I mean? Yeah, I enjoy prep. But I like prep better than off season. Yeah, up until. 
you know, I mean, we really didn't even have to push that hard until like four weeks out. So like, I, I would rather prep than off season, like any day of the week, honestly. Yeah. How, especially how much food you got to fucking. Yeah. I feel great during prep usually for the most part. I do too. When the best I've ever felt in anything correlated with me bodybuilding was when I was like two to four weeks off of junior USA's. My food was like, I was eating like 600 carbs like half the week. The other base days were like 400. My cardio was like 20 minutes. And I just kept getting fucking leaner and leaner. That was my best conditioning ever. I felt I felt fucking fantastic. God bless you. God bless you. I was like, <laughs> at two weeks out, I told Johnny, I'm like, aren't isn't it like walking supposed to be hard right now? And he was like, you've been doing this for so long, dude. He's like, and genetically, your metabolism just is good. He was like, just shut the fuck up and accept it. I was like, okay. Cool, that's cool, dude. All right. All right. I mean, granted, I felt like shit from all the drugs, you know what I mean? Like like that, that I couldn't wait for them to like just be out, especially trying with my anxiety and such. But food wise, I felt I felt great food wise. Like cardio, I was on the treadmill for 20 minutes. I'm like, this is not right. Like I should be doing like way more, you know. Yeah. But there's Every- been preps he's fucking murdered me every single coach I've worked with was always like, you know, we'll see this time around. We won't have to get that low in calories, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Every single one. I've worked with really good coaches. Dude, last time it was Austin. And also, I'll tell you flat out, like, it was the same exact thing. You know what I mean? Uh, 1,200 calories. Yeah, Matt's, Matt's reefy days in prep are they were ridiculous. Um, they're, they're unholy. They're crazy. Hey, they really are. It's not right. And then he'll send me, a, he'll send me pictures the next day and be, like, down two pounds. <laughs> the fuck it's not right <laughs> the one the one day i fed him back-to-back days i think 2400 carbs and he lost four pounds it's just yeah, not was, even that, that was that was directly after like the 1700 calorie days yeah yeah it was retarded and then he was he, he had five guys back-to-back days like <laughs> all right i don't want to fucking talk about this <laughs> <laughs> all right so Next question. um tim um Coleman's not in here yet, right? I won't lead off with oh, his Coleman's question here. then. Oh, is he? I think so. All right. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking. No, he's not. All he right, so we'll start off with the we'll start off with the last one I did then. How how do you feel about Splenda or sweeteners and gut health? I didn't have time to message anybody to get any more than what they put there. And they didn't put gut health, they just put gut, but nonetheless. I mean, my, my, get... my opinion is uh yeah, I just think if if you don't have gut issues and you use Splenda, like don't worry about it. Like don't give yourself a reason to find gut issues. But if you are somebody that has a sensitive gut to begin with, then maybe do do a test on yourself, right? If you're pulling things from your diet, do it slow and controlled. Like pull pull the Splenda for two weeks and see how your 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 gut feels, right? Um, I know like there's been data that suggests artificial sweeteners such as Splenda can like cause like cancer and like cause all this havoc on your whole gut biome and all that stuff. But um, I forget who it was. It was like some popular good fitness influencer who's more science based. He like drilled into it and they were doing it with rats and like 600 times the amount of Splenda you would ever get in a day. It's like if you drank four, four cases of Coca-Cola a day. Um, and yeah, the rats are like fucked up from it. Well, it's like no shit, dude. Like, so yeah, I, that that's how I feel about it. I, I don't think it's something to worry about if you don't have gut issues. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I I honestly I don't I don't from what I've seen as far as research is concerned, the only thing that would ever suggest that there was even an alteration in the gut microbiome from Splenda specifically, right, was the most recent bit of research that we do have that showed that it changed or altered the gut microbiome. What what people then everybody freaks out and they're like, oh, see, Splenda is bad because in the past, to your point, Matt, there's only been these fucking god awful amounts of Splenda that are literally so high, the amounts that they're giving to people and or these rodents, that it wouldn't, like, you wouldn't even be able to pallet those amounts. Like, you, there's no person on the face of the earth that would eat that amount of Splenda to be able to cause these issues, right, that we're seeing in some of this research. But in this particular case, it was a relatively uh, 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 more realistic amount, even though it was still high. It was still relatively realistic, right? 
Uh, but again, what they saw was a change in the gut microbiome, but we don't know long-term whether that change has any type of significant impact, negative or positive. Like everything changed the gut microbiome. You go have your next meal, you're going to see alterations in your gut microbiome. If you eat something you haven't eaten in God knows for how long, you're going to see a relatively significant change in your gut microbiome. If you go to the gym and you train, you're going to see an alteration in your gut microbiome thereafter, right? Like, like anything, it's a very dynamic thing. It's like your blood sugar going up and down all day. Very similar concept in terms of how little and how much uh, impacted uh, BioLean is who you're thinking of. Um, oh, maybe you, Matt, is who that, what the comment probably. was towards. But yeah, I, so I, I've never seen anything that would show any type, like even that stuff, like the aspartamine and the cancer, like, dude, what I try to tell people is I have yet, I've done a lot of GI maps, right? And we've helped a lot of people improve their gut health. And I still have yet to see any gut issue that came down to sweeteners in any way, shape or form, right? I've also, you know, uh, um, never, ever, ever met anyone. And this is one that I kind of lived by for years now, right? Where even like back in the day, you know, I'd be training some older lady. She's like, I cut out my Splenda and I stopped having headaches right away. I'm like, yeah, bitch, I'm sure it was just the Splenda that you cut out, not the Diet Cokes or whatever it was that you were drinking that had the Splenda in it. You know what I mean? Uh, but I'm like, I've never met anybody to this day where they're like, I had this debilitating illness. And the doctor said it was because of this Splenda that I was eating. And I just cut that out. And now my life is perfect again. That's just not a reality. Right. And I know some you know, like I said, some Karen somewhere will raise their hand like, no, it was me. This was the scenario. But it's they're pointing towards something that probably had 97 different variables that were attached to that, too. So I, I can't get caught up in sweetener. It's just a thing I can't I can't waste my time on that one. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I um, I think it's for at least for, for me, in my opinion, it's more so just like being like basing it off the individual. Right. Like if somebody's given perfect feedback on gut health and stuff and like they're putting, you know, hey, I'm having like a diet soda every day, especially like a, a prep, you know, somebody who's in prep. Um, if they're having like, you know, fine digestion, they're not telling you they're bloating, anything like that. Okay, cool. Let's just leave in, you know, the water flavoring you're using, the Splenda in your coffee, whatever the case is. But I do, you know, obviously like to cut them at a certain point, depending on who it is, how much water they're retaining, especially like if you're seeing how much water they're retaining after like high days or whatever, but if they're not giving any digestion, you know, digestive, you know, feedback in a negative way, sure, just keep them in. But I've I've seen this past year for Big Cat, two clients were telling me out of nowhere they were having digestion issues, like they were having severe bloating. So I was like, all right, maybe we're pushing too hard. Maybe they're just in like complete starvation mode. You know what I mean? And I gave them high days. And then on their check-in form, they weren't telling me they were having any artificial sweeteners. So I asked. You know, I was asking like on their form, I put that question specifically, are you having, you know, are you, what artificial sweeteners are you having throughout your day? And I give them a, a list of examples so they know, and they were saying none. And then come to find out these, both of these individuals were using a whole fucking jar of that. Um, What's that zero calorie crap? Um, Walton Farms? Yeah, that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The so, one was using yeah. a bottle of the fucking Caesar salad dressing. And the other one was using that chocolate chip, like a whole thing in her cream of rice twice a day. So I said to both of them, cut it out, and their bloating went away within like days. Yeah. See, that's that's the one. That's the one caveat. There's in prep, we all know, like, yeah, especially when you're extra stressed. It, it, well, legitimately overdo veggies. You know what I mean? Where yep. it's like, dude, you're not losing weight because you're eating too much fucking zucchini. Yep. Right? I had somebody a couple of years ago that was grinding up zucchini and putting it in their oatmeal to give it more volume. Yeah, literally, that's they were they were like. Yes, yeah, grating it, legitimately grating it up and Sounds putting fire. it in your oatmeal to give. What, did you do that? Am no, I thinking no, about no, it? That no, wasn't. No, no. no, it wasn't. No, no, no. But like, there's definitely people that were doing shit like that, That's where they're just putting things, yeah, just to generate more volume. Was or that a woman? Tell me. Uh, I don't remember, to be honest with you. I really don't. I do remember a young guy that I had that was putting, like, he said he would microwave his oatmeal with a liter of water and then microwave it, microwave it, microwave, it, then put more water in and my, because he said it would turn, like, whatever, 30 grams of oats into, like, you know, this big, massive I don't bowl. I understand. Like, like, just fucking eat the 30 grams of oats with normal amount of water yeah, and suffer. Just, it, like, but then when you is. think about it, it's like that's, regardless, like, it's just one of those things where it's like you're going to fuck up your gut, dude. Like, when you're eating big anything time. to that amount, yeah. You're going to fuck up your gut. But to, even more to your point, the reality is I think you 
we like it, it's one of those. I was gonna say you, Marina, but I was, d- there is definitely a reality where it's like, hey, when we're four weeks out. It's I'm sorry, uh, yeah, maybe upwards of like four weeks out, two weeks out, even peak week, where it's like, hey, let's remove all the variables yeah. and see, like, just to we like, regardless of whether it changes anything or not, that way it's not hanging over our head. I think that's what we decided to talk about the 750 calorie diet. There was that point for us where it was literally we went from Muscle Beach into um, hey, Muscle. Yeah, PA muscle. It was a very short time frame in between, and she wasn't. It was like one of those things where it's like, hey, we gotta get this 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 definition, and we gotta get this crispiness. Hey, you have to in. suffer. It is what it is. Yes, <laughs> but but it but it's basically like, okay, remove everything at this point. Like, let's have that in our arsenal where we can remove it. Yep. And is it going to change anything? Maybe not. But realistically, it, we never know until we remove it. Yeah. And I'll say, I uh, I know it's not the question, but still related to the topic. <clears throat> we uh. We pulled artificial sweeteners at two weeks out with this last prep, and we didn't the year previously. Um, but I I think it made a difference in my look for sure. Yeah. So I also too. Oh, thanks, good. I went um with with Matt going into just how lean and dry he gets. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't I didn't cut them out for big cat and easterns because I knew with someone like. You know, as a coach, right? You guys all know, like you know who the fuck's following their shit to a T and who's not, right? So I cut them out because we're going, like, you're going for a pro card here. You know what I mean? Like you have one chance at that, you know. So like at for your first try, you know. So I cut them out. I do, I do think it made a difference for him too as well. I think he was definitely drier. Uh, for yeah. Sure. Don't goes to me to your point, Matt. I think they're. I think. I think. I don't know because, like I said, I didn't follow up on this. I told you guys that. But like, I don't know if the question was prep related at all, or if it was just general. I took it as just general gut health. Like, I think we all took it as. Yeah. So I, but I do think that's two different scenarios. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. One's, yeah. yeah. Gut health versus one's like managing a look that yeah. we're trying to attain. Yeah. You know. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. All right, um, Matt. You want to? How many questions did you have, Matt? Three. <clears throat> okay. You want to go? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what are your guys' biggest gym pet peeves? Oh fuck. When people yeah. don't fucking shower or put deodorant on, and they smell like shit. That's yeah. When you're, yeah. dude, like you, we've it's all experienced. Awful. I literally have to move to the other side of the gym. This has happened before. I don't know if I just have an uh, an uber sensitive nose, but I can smell someone's stench from ten feet away. I, I can't. I can't do it. It wasn't you. It definitely it's wasn't happened, you. Dude, no, I. You're right because I've experienced it multiple times. Probably like three or four in the fifteen years I've been going to the gym where somebody will literally smell on the other side of the gym and it's like bro do you not like do you not it's like not function sweet. in society like could you that's that it's it's vile like that you would smell like that as a human being it's nasty <laughs> um yeah i mean for me it's just because i don't really have to deal with humans i just yeah i was gonna say kinda, kind of talk to myself yeah um yeah yeah that's probably my pet peeve when my music's not loud enough and, um, <laughs> no but when i was going to public uh commercial gyms it was either when people don't re-rack their fucking weight like that was so, like the worst um and then you see like a female trying to use it or somebody who just can't get the weight off it's just that was that was one of them and then the smell thing too was i remember like being on some machines and then just like what the f- is that it's like the person yeah. next to you and you just have i just sometimes i just had to move um who the hell who Oh, Vanessa, yeah, the college kids. Yeah, that was actually at that gym, Vanessa. I, I remember I was on the adductor machine, and these, like, college, these f- young kids next to me on the leg extension, they all smelled so bad. I had to move. I went to the lying leg curls. I was like, I'll come back to this shit. It was mm-hmm. so bad. Uh, I think maybe because I lived in, like, that Colonia area for so long, like that North Jersey area, it's very uh, – it's very um, eclectic, the mix of nationalities. I think everybody really stunk. Uh, no offense to people who live up north, but I mean, I I, I think I'm I think I'm like used to it. But I I, I really doesn't like it. like I I know if somebody's around me that smells. I'm like it gross, but like I don't really think about it that much afterwards. It's just you know go to work do your thing. But the one thing that really like fucking for whatever reason like fucking makes my skin crawl is the little motherfuckers that everybody has in their gym nowadays. That's you know it, they're like you know doing their thing and they're like listen to the music and they got their fucking what's it the fucking uh drac fucking wolves hat on or whatever the fuck it's called drag sport oh dark, dark sport. sport whatever it's and they got what this fucking 
But then they the wolves they, shut up. You know what that is. You know what then it they is. They have then they have, have like no their, their their pose down and they're like they lifting their up. shirt. And they're seeing their app. These kids are like relentless at LA Fitness where they are literally every time I turn yeah, around, and they're like playing they around doing like one of these poses and you know he doesn't compete he's just throwing it up there like it's literally like it's it drives it hurts it hurts my insides because they're 150 pounds and it's like dude go eat a fucking cheeseburger Wendy's is across the street go fucking get yourself a couple extra large fries like what are you doing right now like you look like a douchebag stop yeah I didn't know we were going there with this one I was, I was, I would have been so embarrassed when I was loading. in the gym flexing Wait. like that. I would have been super, super like insecure and embarrassed by it. I really would have. That's dark so sport. You, oh, fuck. You, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you know, like this. My gym. Tim, you're wearing that right now. I no, thought it was, is, but it's uh, not. This is, this is NAR vibes. This is uh, actually my clients on here. This is her clothing line. Oh, oh, see, look. It's, yeah, it's NAR vibes. It's different. There you go. Oh, Paulina's well. like, nope. See, it's Paulina's clothing line. Wait, wait, Paul, show me, show me the, show me the shirt, Marina. The dark sport. Oh, the dark. Sport. What the hell? They is just that? all say wolves across. They the just world. all say wolves, and then their thing is like no hashtag N N F G U. I have no idea. I don't. I only know what young, I think young, that young stands for. Is. That's what I call what? it. Young law. Young, young, young law. Young law. That's all I know. That is young law. Yeah. Wait. Um. For me, I, I just hate when people do their set standing in front of the dumbbell rack, whether it's like a curl or a lateral raise, or they're doing their bent over rows on the dumbbell rack. Like the dude. entire commercial gym is the pet peeve. That's yeah. the, that's the whole, true. The whole well, I mean, gym. nowadays the non-commercial gyms so, are filled with the same people. So, so yeah. I haven't been in, like I said, in a commercial gym now in two years. But from what my dad tells me, apparently now there's groups of kids who go together. There's yeah. like yeah. five or six 18 year olds together and there's seven tripods my dad said around that yeah and they take six pair of dumbbells and they all do like the same exercise at the same time and then they all move on and, and now gyms gyms shit. kind of gyms kind of promote that now and do like a discount if you what? it's called it's called like a like a um like the the squad rate or something and you need five oh, or more okay. yes you need five or more to sign up and you get a discount. Each of them get a discount on the membership. You know, the crazy That's thing crazy. is, the crazy it's, thing it's is disgusting. you're talking about, you, you said 18 years old and some of them are definitely within that range. Don't get me wrong. But, but I'm seeing kids that are like legitimately 15, 16. Like they could not drive themselves to the gym. There's no doubt about it. We even have a little guy that rolls up to Kingdom. No flubber. Cool. No flubber. Yeah, yeah, no flubber. Yeah, there he is. No flubber. No flubber. <laughs> we 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 have a kid that pulls up to Kingdom. Who again? He's not this guy. He's he, he seems like a hard worker, right? But he pulls up to Kingdom on his ten speed. You know, slugs a couple of uh, slugs a couple of free workout shapes or whatever it is, and gets to work. Like the kids are getting in the gym at such a young age now. But again, I remember me being in the gym, like just feeling like so like like insecure and like worried. Like, am I doing this right? Like, is this person gonna like yell at me or or whatever it is? Or or again, I told you guys about Dwayne Dwayne Ball. It was kind of like everybody's, yeah, D-Ball was like everybody's first coach. He, if you came into the gym and you played around like that, he would destroy you. He would legitimately verbally accost you. They should you still until he, do that. And, until he made you pick up your bags and literally leave. Like he oh, would genuinely kick you out of the gym. Do, do you guys remember a story about Evan Senapani mm -hmm. from like five, six years ago? About what was how, it? Uh, Evan Senapani. You know oh, him? okay. So yeah. I don't know if you guys remember the story. It was like five, six years ago. Some kids were like fucking around at the gym that he trained out at the time, deadlifting, and um, he allegedly like flipped out on the kid and slapped one of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm just picturing when you are when you're talking about that guy D ball. Didn't you know, didn't I, guy sister Nino also yell at like two kids no, he, like he, up he north? Out. Yeah, and then did. and then he made it like a like he marketed off of shirt, it too. Yeah. I got a shirt. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm all I'm. I don't want to get it like the, anyone to get the wrong impression. Like I'm, I'm all for, you know, younger generation, like lifting. Like we were all there at some point and all that. It's just, it's just like kept common courtesy. You know what I mean? And respect to re-rack weights, not talk. Like don't be on your phone sitting there. Like just, you know, it's just have respect. You know, people want to use the equipment, like do your set and move on. Like if you're in a group of people, whatever. But again, it should apply to, to everything. Just have that common courtesy and respect. Like everyone's there trying to accomplish something. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're fucked 100%. up. Tim, you're fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your question, Steve? Shit. Well, let's see. 
Uh, so I already asked the artificial one, I guess, right? When the cut art, we kind of already answered that. Um, recommended insulin dose slash what do you start your clients at? Oh. You just have a blanket across the board for everybody. You just this is just a cookie cutter. 25 yeah. units a meal. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Back. Um I don't I don't think that there is a recommended dose, right? I think everybody's different. I typically like to start someone in one or two meals, you know, specifically their pre or pre and post. And I always like to dose the insulin around what their food's currently at when we put it in. I don't ever want to put the insulin at a higher spot where I have to just increase the calories to match the dose. You know what I mean? I like to say your pre-meal has 80 carbs. It might start you at like three, four units, right? I want you to give me feedback on how you're feeling, right? Take your insulin, eat right within five, 10, 15 minutes, and then give me feedback on how you're feeling, you know, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, you know, an hour later, um, something like that. And then as food increases, if we need to increase the insulin dose, we will. Um, I mean, I have some people that have it in three meals a day or four, you know what I mean? But um, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I don't really think you really need more than like 10 max in a meal. I mean, Tim, you might, you know, think differently, obviously, but that's just kind of where I'm at. Yeah, I mean, I, we're talking fast acting insulin. I've definitely used more than 10 at a meal, but only because, again, some of those meals get fucking large, like pre and post workout, for example, where it's like, I think, was I was was it you guys I was talking to about this last week or was it Riley? It might have been Riley that I was talking to where, again, just for me to offload some stress from my GI tract or, or if I have a client, right? And they're at 900 calories. I mean, sorry, 900 carb, 1,000 carb. Like Riley posted his shit today. He's at over 1,000 grams of carbs on training days. So there might be a significant increase in intake at, at, at one of these meals where he's having 300 grams of carbs, right? So I might, you know, put the insulin in there um, at whatever, a unit per 10, 10 carb or a unit per every 20 carb is more realistic, right? right? But again, that's, that's, I would say the, the the fast acting insulin, I would say is more rare for me than the long acting insulin. Long acting insulin is something that I rely on pretty consistently with either males or females that are enhanced during an off season like when we get that. Yeah, yeah, either or Atlantis or a, uh, a no, the Novolin, uh, whatever it is, Novolin N, I think. And yeah, Novolin Novolin R, I think is the fast one. No, it's yeah, Novolin so Novolin N. But we'll do double the dosage because it's a little bit of a, a, a shorter half-life. Sure, right, we'll take yeah. it in the morning and at night uh, so, before the first and last meal. Tim, let me ask you this. With the Lantis, did you, what'd you do, like 50 or 75 in the morning? Uh, no, well, again, with the Novolin N, I don't have, I can't, I can't remember with the Lantis, to be honest. Last time I had a connection where we got Lantis on a regular basis yep. was, was legitimately probably like six years ago, seven years ago. I don't really, really remember. Uh, but it definitely wouldn't be 50 to 75 right out of the gate. No way. It was probably like what, maybe like, I don't know, 10 units to start. Of the way. Okay. So yeah, you, you started it super low and then what's like, 100%. The highest, what's the highest you would get to Atlantis? Uh, again, based on somebody's diet and how high the diet goes, but if somebody's eating a thousand grams of carbs then yeah, it's probably going to get up there to, 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 to I would say what? potentially. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's really, it's got to be based off of somebody's glucose and somebody, not just their glucose in terms right. of the blood glucose, but also what is the HbA1c reading over that time? Yep. You know what I mean? Those are two important factors. Um, but I, I would say with the Novolin N, realistically, like again, Riley right now, I think he's 10 units in the AM, 10 units in the PM, and he's eating a thousand grams of carbs a day. So it's not necessary. That he, he's also got a very good metabolism. He reacts very well to the increases in food. He's very lean at a thousand grams of carb. So again, he might not need that 50 grams, whereas somebody else might need that additional support, especially if they have you know, a fucking overactive metabolism and there's just no chance of them storing anything and they're just burning through that shit at a heavy rate. But I have a couple females right now, they're eating well too, that are on about six IUs a day, three in the AM, three in the PM. So it, it's really dependent on the individual and how much food they're consuming. Uh, but like I said, I, I I err on the side of basal insulin first, yes. right? That longer acting insulin first, then I'll move into a faster acting insulin, especially as the increases, you know, happen within that training window. Yeah. Comment section is popping off. Oh shit. <laughs> All right. Bree um, goes, what does what does insulin do? Sam goes, you won't need insulin with eating air on PQ. <laughs> exactly. You'll be good, right? <laughs> um yeah, no, well, I mean, you want well, I mean, we bodybuilders, we everybody, you know, you use it for to give your pancreas 
a break from, and like Tim said, the GI and such from eating so many carbs, give the pancreas a break from just operating on it, you know, its own insulin and the extra endogenous insulin comes in and can uh, do the job that the pancreas would. Um, but uh, also too, then I think on the, on, obviously on the flip side, the anabolic effect as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Prevents insulin resistance. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, seriously, we got to push, food to such a high level in some of these cases, especially when somebody's really trying to grow, that at the end of the day, we might just need a little bit of help and support in the areas that would typically handle all that food. Um, but yeah, to your point, Steve, there's also a, a, you know, a pretty big anabolic effect there too that we could take advantage of. And for women, it's actually a good, like I know a lot of women might think like, what is insulin? Never heard of it. But if anything, it's one of those you know, more of an, it should be more of an entry level drug than it's thought of for a female into the enhancement realm because it doesn't have the same impact on an androgenic level that, you know, the Anavar does, that the uh, TRT does, or that these, again, these androgenic options are going to have long term in terms of their fertility, um, immediate virilization side effects. Insulin doesn't have any of that, right? It's not a sex hormone. So it doesn't end up fucking with those things. So it could be very beneficial for a female in terms of growth. And like you said, too, even a low, low dose, like fucking two yeah. three units like that's probably enough to cover most women's food that they're going to get oh, up to you know a hundred percent i agree and it's so um, cheap um yeah, yeah and, and brie to tim's point about it mitigating insulin resistance so um up leading up to my hardest push on food here in this off season before i was using insulin i was popping like you know a little over 100 on fasting uh, glucose i think the monitor was a little bit high anyway but yeah. regardless, with the same monitor, after I started using insulin, I mean, I was popping low 80s, you know, high 70s. Oh, so, shit. So, um, yeah, it made a big difference for me. Yeah. That was, that was yeah. the first time I ever used it, actually, was that last, that first and last cycle. No, no, can't say that because I've got called a liar by four people because when you turned pro, everyone thought you were fucking blasting all this growth hormone and insulin. And you weren't on any insulin or growth until after you turned pro. No. No, I we, I use growth, but I didn't. We I don't think. No, we I'm saying combined. Oh. You didn't use. Oh yeah, no, insulin. I've only ever used insulin um, this last this last push. Yeah, well, when somebody asked me that on, and I said no, that apparently when you ask a question, you get the right answer. You're still a fucking liar. Yeah. So. yeah. It's, I mean, it's, I definitely don't believe you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you know, insulin's one of those things that like in the bodybuilding community, people are like so scared of. Cause it's like, you know, one of those things you could die if you take it and don't eat. I, it's like, don't, yeah. don't ever fucking put yourself in the situation where you won't have some access to food. Um, well, it's also, that's the, see, that's the thing that drives me nuts. Cause that's where I was when I first, like insulin was around, obviously, since we've all, you know, but it was one of those things where when I was younger, it was like, you know, Hey, this is death wish dieting. If you use insulin, it was literally a Dan Duchesne thing. Right. But it's, it's, it's always been around. It's always been a thing, but it's always been feared, you know, by everybody to your point, Matt. And like, the reality is if you take a basal level insulin, like I might take a basal level insulin if I'm on a high enough dosage of growth hormone first thing in the morning and I don't eat until fucking noon and I go four or five hours or whatever completely and totally fasted. Like I'll take it right before bed and it's not going to drop you to such a load, especially if your dosage is correct. Also, you know also I mean? helps with fat burning. Yeah, it's it's those it's those it's the it's the fast acting insulin that can really fuck somebody up if you're not careful with it. Um, but I think sometimes we get so scared, like people, somebody goes hypo, and then the immediate thing is like, oh my god, you know, hypo, especially when you get really pulled down to those lower digits, it can be scary. Your heart starts beating, you're dripping sweat, you feel fucking awful until you bring yourself out of that. And I think people get so scared away by that concept or by that thought process. That it's like it's not a valid option for them anymore. When in reality, most cases, like, hey, you just, you know, you were an idiot and you didn't eat fast enough. Like, don't be stupid. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's really that simple. Yeah. Um, I had a I had a second insulin question. Just I'll ask real quick, uh, just because it's on the same topic. It says, what do you recommend it, the length of time to use insulin is? And I messaged this person back. I told him that I don't think there's a recommended time just because. If you're pushing food, right? Like if you're pushing like Riley, right? He's pushing all this food, right? You have him on a set amount of insulin to help his pancreas and help the insulin resistance and all this with all that food. You're not just going to like be like, all right, dude, we're going to use this for eight weeks and then cut it out when the food's still high, right? Because then you're defeating the purpose of of the use. You know what I mean? So I don't think it was a set, a set time. I think it just really has to do with, again, like where's the push on the food? Where's the amount of food, right? And then like, 
say you go into like a clean out phase, a little recomp diet phase, whatever, like for six, seven, eight weeks, then sure, maybe you pull it out and, and then give give a little break. But I don't think there's a set recommended time of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I, wait, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. I was answering people on, on Instagram. Somebody else pick up. Anybody else? Um, I was, I was, I was reading too. Oh, my bad. Message Christine back then. Shitty co-host. What shitty um, co-host? My bad, my bad. So, so time frame. I don't know what Steve just said, and I don't want to go against what you just said necessarily, but <laughs> potentially play devil's advocate here. Tim said pull. <laughs> oh, Tim. Um, Steve said pull it. Uh, bring it up and down. Oh yeah. I was, so you didn't say come off. No, I potentially. Said, so, so I said if there's, I don't think there's a set time frame to use it because right. Take Riley for example, who's eating a thousand carbs, like you said. You're not going to be like, hey, Riley, we're going to keep this in only for eight weeks, but you're still pushing right. food. You're going to keep it for the duration of the push. And then at some point, you're going to have to start to pull down, reset yeah. for maybe a month, like a month and a half, two months, and then maybe pull it out. Then, you know, yeah, give it the a question break. Is, yeah, the question is, do you need insulin or don't you need insulin, period? And if the answer is yes, then you use insulin when you need it. If the answer is no, then you take the fucking insulin out. And it's really that simplistic. Johnny's told me he's had people using insulin for like a year straight. Like, yeah, easily. I mean, said, again, if you're going to be in a growth phase for that long, you, I mean, you know, he said, Shanique, he said Shanique used it all year round when she won her first Olympic. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, realistically, especially for something about that, that your perfect example, dude, what does she have? She has this great genetic structure as far as her symmetry is concerned, as far as her waist is concerned and the way that plays, that's all great, but she does have a very long physique. And again, that adds to her symmetry that adds to her or, or her physique overall, but it is a very long structure in terms of those legs and those arms. How do you keep that full year round, especially when right. you have lower food? Insulin is going to help that look overall. You know what I'm saying? It's going to help bring that fullness to those longer muscle bellies. It can be a potential thing that we utilize to be able to magnify somebody's physique. Even as we get closer to prep, that's one of those things that a lot of people will stray away from it during peak week, because there can be a little bit of issue there if you're not managing appropriately in terms of, um, you know, water retention and things of this nature. But again, all that should be planned per that person's physique and the ability to get their best physique on stage. And sometimes insulin is going to be necessary for that, or at least a, uh, tool in, in in our toolkit for that. Yep. Cool. All right, sweet. Uh, Marina. Uh, question. Sorry, I'm gonna pull it up. Okay, this is from Aubrey. So this is a little bit lengthy, but I think it's a fun one. Um, she said, "My feedback from nationals was to be very careful not to add any more density to my shoulders. Can you talk about?" whether that would mean I stop training them, just go lighter or less volume. Last week, you said you don't train arms at all. I didn't know how common it was for bikini competitors not to train certain body parts. I've always trained for a balanced physique, but now I'm getting to where I'm borderline figure. So I don't know if you guys, do you guys know Aubrey? Yes. Um, I don't know if you guys saw her stage shots, but she definitely has some juicy, juicy delts. Um, but what I would say to that is, bringing like intensity down because like, it, I mean, also, I don't know how she's training now her shoulders. So I can't say bringing volume down, going lighter. I don't know, but like really just bringing intensity down. You don't want to lose delts either. Cause they are definitely looking for some capped delts at this point. Um, Tim, but stop harassing people in the comments. My bad. My bad. That's what's <laughs> happening. Tim just harassing you're, you're, people. You're on a good comments. roll, Marina. I was on a good roll. So don't stop training them entirely. Bring down intensity to keep, to keep your delts for sure. Um, but then also she talks, talks about bikini girls, not training certain body parts. I think like that comes to a point where only when you've gotten to a point where now you are kind of sculpting your physique, whether it's bikini, whether it's bodybuilding, whatever, if someone has overpowering delts, you back off a little bit. If you still need more, more glutes, you're hammering the glutes. Um, so yeah, uh, to answer her question, intensity lowers. For the delts. Yeah. I mean, I, I would, I would definitely say that at the end of the day, you got to look at it from your total, what, what is somebody's total volume capacity as far as training is concerned. Right. So well, which, whatever it might be, and it's like, okay, well, if I have, you know, an overpowering thing here, but I have an underpowering thing somewhere else that I need to bring up. Let's just take some of that volume, push it towards that weak area and make sure that we're exploiting that weak area. But I definitely have clients that don't touch certain body parts mm -hmm. yeah. because of how overly muscular that body part is and how we need to bring other things up around that. Realistically, the amount of volume that you need to sustain a body part is going to be so minimal that you're going to hit that by 
a byproduct of training something else. You know what I mean? So as it relates to shoulders, which I guess for a female, this isn't happening much, but you might hit that enough through a chest press or something along those lines to maintain everything you need, you know, uh, uh, in your shoulders, right? So it might not even need direct work, but even if we want to do direct work there over a period of time, yeah, to your point, to Aubrey's point, I mean, bring down the intensity, bring down the overall volume of it. So instead of going in there and doing three sets of side lateral raises for upwards of 20 pounds or whatever it might be, maybe I'm only doing two sets, and I have a very short rest period in between. So I'm over there blasting them with a lower weight, maybe 10, 15 pounds. And I have a very low rest uh, uh, period. And I, I essentially getting in, touching those delts and leaving them alone thereafter. You know, maybe that's sufficient for, for an individual to just sustain uh, that body, uh, that body part. But again, I would just use that. It's not that you, I think sometimes we think about the fact that it's like, oh, my glutes are so overpowering or my quads are over or whatever it is. To where it's like, oh, I can't train that now. It's almost like you're missing a day of your splits. Like, no, everybody has a weak part that mm -hmm. they need to work exactly. on. So all that all, all we do is move more volume on where those delts were, right? And your days might look a little funky. I know I've talked to some people recently where it's like, I, like the other day I was in the gym training arms and hamstrings. And people are like, why are you doing that? Arms and hamstrings don't make any sense. Well, when you have shitty little arms and you have shitty little hamstrings and you put those two shitty things together, it makes sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So as, as long as it makes sense for you and your physique, who cares what yeah. the split is set up as? Exactly. Yeah, I, I think too, for Aubrey, like it, it, two ways to look at it, right? If the judges are giving you feedback, like, hey, your shoulders are like right at the figure, like judging criteria. One, you either stop training them for a little bit, right? Let everything else, like the lower half, catch up, right? Um, or you maybe you can just reduce the volume to reduce the volume if you still want to obviously train them. And like Tim said, just get in, get out with that body part, right? Or just throw that volume cut in half or even a, a third of it or a fourth, throw that at the end of some other day. And it might look like a weird day, like Tim said, but you're still getting some blood flow in there and such. But I would say really just depends on, again, if the feedback was that they're right at the figure judging criteria, maybe just give them a break for a little bit. You know what I mean? If they're that overpowering to the current, your current physique and just let everything else catch up and just keep reassessing, you know, every few months. Um, and then maybe you can start to add that vol like some volume back in. If you see that they're, they're responding to that little bit of volume still, you know, like if you're doing, um, you know, what the heck? Um, if you're doing like 12 sets, say reduce it to six. If it's if they're still progressing ahead of everything else, maybe do two sets. If and if it's still going like that, then cut them out. Yeah. Uh who's that? Hump? Oh no. Hump Hump that that. You want to add on that, Matt? No, you guys covered I, I want to touch on yeah, 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 you, you agree with everything you guys said. The only thing I want to add there is I, I do think that for a female in the bikini category that really likes to train. One of the toughest things is being at that cap as far as muscularity is concerned. That's really one of those, in, unless you're in a position where you know you can take that next step into another category, another division, it really is a tough thing because, again, you might be in a position where there is overall less training volume being had, period, uh -huh. right, period. Like, it's like, you know, hey, my my shoulders are so overwhelmed, like if Steve said, that they're at that, that, that cutoff to where it's like, hey, this would probably fit on a figure female. And I would say don't go anywhere near those fucking delts, period. Don't touch them. You know what I mean? And if they get, like I said, if they're, if they get a little bit of work as a byproduct of something else, fine. But at the end of the day, I do think that for a female that really likes to train, one of the toughest things is being at the top of that bikini division from a muscularity perspective. And at that point, it's really about refinement. And it's like, you know, refinement, something that's not going to look like your typical training sessions are, you know what I mean? It might even be some fucking fluff work just to get you in there and make you feel yeah. like you're doing something, but it's like plyometrics for your lower body or something like that, yeah. which is things that we program before for different clients. I, you know, it's just, it's a tough position to be in. I always say like, as annoying as it is to continue to be told I have to grow and I'm small and I look like I'm 12 and I am 12. Um, I think it'd be worse if I heard you're way too big, you know? Cause then it's like, that's all fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah then you really have to cut back and that's just you know it's the truth i i know a figure competitor uh a wellness competitor right now that just went she went 
she destroyed it where it was like, you know, first season, she got her pro card second season. Uh, actually she's, she's going for her first season right now for her pro debut. She does not train any upper body whatsoever. She trains three days a week, yeah. all lower body. Yeah. And she's a popular one where everybody would know who it is if I mentioned it, but again, that's it's three days a week, only lower body, zero upper body whatsoever for an entire year and a half worth of an off season right now going into her pro debut. And from what I was told by her coach, there's no thought of changing that whatsoever. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I was just looking at Aubrey's picture here. I would say just don't train your delts for a little. <laughs> I feel like she's not there yet not to train them, though. Her delts are impressive. They're right? Gorgeous. They're gorgeous. <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like I think that she can still train them, touch them, but they shouldn't grow. Definitely not grow. But if she has a hyper, if she has hyper responsive delts, right? Like, That's true. Just to play devil's advocate, even so, say she's doing twelve sets a week, right, or or whatever working sets, right, or or she's putting that, that effort in, and then she reduces it to six. The chances are the way her shoulders look, they're still responding. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what is she gonna do? Two sets? What happens if she still responds? Then like you got them even further ahead. You know. And, and that also might say, be something. Never yeah. train them again. It's just if the judges, I don't know what. The judges said, like, say they said, okay, you got to bring your quads up or your glutes or whatever. Like, give it time. Maybe put that effort into actually training them. Yeah, when it comes day. down to it. Put the volume up, you know what I mean, over three days of lower body. Bring that up and then reassess, you know? Oh, yeah. Right, who's next? Matt. Um. Oh, if you could only pick one movement for lower body, what would it be? Ooh. For lower body? Yeah. Wait, so like for I have like for overall growth of the lower body or like something yeah. that I like? Growth. You can only train one exercise for lower for your lower. What would it be? I don't know if it, you're going to go hack squat. I'm, or I was going to say press. hacks. No, I was going to say the hack only, squat. The only reason why I would think leg press is because for me, it's a lot easier to target the posterior on a leg press than it would be on a hack squat. You know what I mean? That's yeah. true. But if you, you can also go on the hack squat backwards. That's true too. That's true. Yeah, but that would probably, knowing me, I'd probably break a spine. So let's be real. I'm out on this one. I'm, I'm going to go hack right squat. I'm choosing glute bridges. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, I would pick uh, standing calf raise because my calves are. Or <laughs> leg <right. Or>, <laughs> squats. <laughs> squats. Now with this conversation, <laughs> I would choose hacks probably if I did. Choose yeah, more. I think that's probably the obvious one. It's it got to be either hack or leg press though. I don't think like like a pendulum as great as it is. I love a pendulum squat, but why like not? that's totally quad. This why not? Why not a barbell squat? squat? Yeah, that's true too. It'd have to be something like that. Matt, It'd let's be, be honest. We're too like fucking that. old for that. Yeah, I don't know. No, if I'd I be do. Able to I'll get up. under. Give me, give me two weeks. I'll get under five plates. I, I'm no. not that old. You fucking immediately know. Honestly, I probably would too because now you're challenging me, and I really want to do it now. <laughs> Let's do you it. Know, you know, I could do it too. I well, just, you're... I just pulled four ninety five for fifteen off the floor. I could definitely do it on my dude. Me, me, you, and Tim will have a race to, to five plates. Marina, Marina looks like a baby deer when she's squatting. <laughs> That's like, fucked like, up. She, like, knees, <laughs> knees shooting all the way out this I way. I don't way, squat. Way, like, my body squatting. isn't built for squatting. You're tall. You I am a baby legs. deer. I do have uh, how tall are you, Marina? Six I'm not foot. tall. I'm, fi- I'm five, five and three quarters. Oh, yeah, it's not even that. It's she, she's five six. Let's be real. She's I'm five, not five six, six because then I would be class. She's five, six. She's I'd be class G in nationals and I'm not. I'm class F. And there's a okay. big discre- discrepancy between F now and G. we're now we're talking Huge about looks. The All right, next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, what do we got here? Uh, cardio during the off season, yay yes. or nay? Yes. yes. No, please don't make me. Yeah, definitely. I think even even with what we've all been talking about here, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I ever made during an off season was with all the food, all the food. I tried to limit not too the amount of movement. Yeah, I tried to limit because I didn't want to increase my food again, dude. Like I was legitimately like trying to figure out ways to be able to eat somewhere more realistically around like whatever, something more realistic. You know what I mean? Yeah, and for course. me at the time, 
700 grams of carbs, a lot more realistic than 900 grams of carbs. How do I make up that difference? And yep. for me, it was, okay, don't go over 3000 steps a day, no cardio whatsoever. And like, try, and it's like, it literally just made issues. It made matters worse. It, you know, that, that lack of movement, like digestion starts to go to shit. Your appetite drops even faster. Like I just, I, I, I there might be somebody that has such a fast metabolism, like they can get away with not doing cardio during the off season. But at that rate, and and, and maybe to answer the question, is it even a good thing, you know, right. that you're not doing the cardio, regardless of your metabolism? You might even have to like sacrifice, eat the additional food just to do the cardio to make yourself like feel better on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and to be able to train efficiently too. My training suffered big time when I did that, big time. Sorry, just to jump in real quick. So my wife chimed in on uh, the height conversation. So she's 5'8". So what does that make her marina in nationals is that like class z she would be the last one because then it goes up to uh wait what is this uh share anyway um a b c d e f g h should be h yeah, so it's i think h goes h goes five seven and above oh my god so it's just like there's no cap after that you're gonna have like a six foot five chick in there just yeah right there. next to her um exactly oh so anyway we're going back to the the off season cardio um i don't remember what you said tim i don't know why i just completely lost he said keeping there. the cardio in allows at least uh him to get hungry oh yeah yeah no i think yeah i agree man like there's so many benefits to it like from that perspective right like wait you're five nine one Increasing digestion, you know, walking, um, you know, walking after your meals, um, burning some of the excess calories, right, just to get shit moving, right, the metabolism working a little bit, um, but also from like a heart health perspective, right? I mean, yeah, that's like true too. Bodybuilding isn't like a healthy sport, so it is good to get the heart working, right? Um, that's really good call. Fuck. What are you talking about? <laughs> I didn't even think about that though. That's a really good call. Seriously, I think mean, everybody wants to awesome. jump right on. Yeah, everybody wants to jump right on fucking more. blood pressure meds and shit like that. Like sometimes it might just be fucking do some cardio, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that's a good yeah. point. Johnny, Johnny actually reduced my cardio. So like eight weeks ago, when I told him I was wanted to be a bodybuilder again and something like that, I wanted is to that be why cool. your head got so small? Yeah, I told him I wanted to be cool again. Um, so he lowered because I was doing forty five minutes of cardio every morning just for fun because it felt good. Honestly, as crazy as that sounds, um, it also like really cleared my my mind first thing in the morning and like set a good pace so my anxiety was much lower honestly throughout the day um but also too at 5 a.m like there's nobody up right like i don't have any check-ins sitting in my inbox at that time so i i didn't have to worry about anything else you know so like i had that first hour of the day just to clear my head um but now i'm doing 20 minutes and that's like a breeze but it helps it honestly it honestly helps yeah um, so all right, um, who's next? What did I just got a question? How do I cope with body dysmorphia? Am I just oh milk flubber asked me? My man Milf Flubber, don't look in the mirror. Just 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 don't look I, in the mirror. I don't know. You probably shouldn't have blown him up on that one. I'm struggling with body we dysmorphia. We all struggle with body oh, dysmorphia. <laughs> yeah, no, me, me especially. Yeah, we all got that, dude. That's when the day you decide to be a bodybuilder or start lifting weights and stuff, that you're always at body dysmorphia. Uh -huh. I I haven't figured it out in 13 years. I know probably none of you. Have. It just is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, yep. Yeah. 200 micrograms of clan. I don't take any. Oh. I don't take any clan. So like, wait, what was what what was the what was the question about the body dysmorphia though? Did you um, actually finish the question? Yeah, that's what it said. It said, "How do I cope with body dysmorphia? Am I just small?" Oh yeah, no, we're just small, dude. Let's be real. Yes. You're 170 pounds, dude. I know how that feels. <laughs> one stare, one like, stare, what's like well, away from being who you want to be, buddy? That's that's what I always thought. <laughs> I'm done. 38 years later, 38 years later, uh, still one more away. Tim, Tim 74 more. cycles in. <laughs> 70. <laughs> I just gotta get some blood work done. That's it. One more push. And we're, on, and we're on to the Matt, 75th. So Matt says cardio. I actually enjoy. I feel good after, but I just don't make progress with yeah. it I no, just we're well no, we're you're, well you're just, aware you just you just don't eat enough that's not the cardio yeah you yeah, might be the one person i would take cardio away for yeah he, yeah, he, has, me, no, if, he has he has no cardio in his plan if if i could if i could gain with cardio in the off season trust me you could gain with cardio in the off season he's gotta eat he, can. he just needs to eat all his meals 
I told you, Matt, take your meal to the bathroom. Tell them you're taking a, a, a poop and a eat big old poop. poopy. Yep, and eat your damn food. Yeah, they won't say anything. And start shoving more of them sandwiches down at work. And don't tell Steven, just start blasting 800 milligrams a decade. Day. I bet you a million bucks will grow. Your dick, might, your dick won't work. Or, or a week. Yeah, or a week. Mar- yeah. Marino uh, will, will bring Yeah, Marino will leave you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, next question. Oh my um, God. Can you do your food slash contest prep on your own without a coach? No, obviously not. I just work, yeah. So I, I just learned about just work, yeah. My first ever prep, I did. And I was uh, 17 years old, I think. Never bulked ever. Well, like, I had a good physique for a 17-year-old. I was pretty big. Um, but I basically did an hour of cardio a day and, like, close to zero carb for 16 weeks. So you can imagine how that went. So don't, no, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I did my last uh, prep for the most part by myself, and it was awful. Um, and then I did my peak by myself, um, which was even more awful. And uh, it's just one of those things where you, you're you constantly telling yourself one or the other, right? In my mind, it was like, you need to be more full. You need to be more full. You need to be more full. And then I got four weeks out. It's like, ah, I'm fat. And I'm not full anymore. It's just fat. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't lose enough fat, right? Um, and then it's like, you know, especially peak week where you're going to fuck with yourself the most, where it's like, ah, did I overshoot now? Did I undershoot? Like, am I full? Like, there's just... At the end of the day, I think when you're coaching yourself, the one thing that is definitively true is there's going to be too many questions post that prep for you to feel really confident about what package you brought to stage. Whereas if somebody else is coaching, there might still be some questions, but it's not as many as you would have on your own kind of going through all of those things over and over and over and over again, every little detail, right? Like it's almost like, I hate to say this as a coach, but it's almost like I can blame the coach if I don't feel like something went wrong, or at least I can I have a conversation I can have with somebody in terms of what we could do differently next time. You know what I mean? Whereas yeah. in my head, I'm contemplating 97 different scenarios that could have taken place that didn't. And it's just too much for me to like create some sort of usable information out of. Yeah. Um, okay. So is it possible? Yes. Do I recommend it? No. Um, I think in, especially today's day and age where there's, Social media is like the devil of comparison, right? Um, I think that everybody, a lot of people just get so in their head from checking, oh, who's doing the show I'm doing? You know what I mean? Oh, is I got to get leaner, right? I got to, you know, be bigger, right? So I feel like it, it's smart to obviously, very wise and smart to have that that coach there to kind of take that stress off of you. Sure, you're still going to compare and all that, but like if you tell your coach, hey, uh, you know, so and so, this person's doing the show. Look at this picture. Like, you know, you're you're able to give that objective opinion to them. Like, dude, you're right on track, or you know, like we don't, you're you're good. You know, just um, whereas like if you're making your own decisions, like you guys already said, like you might push too hard, or you might not push enough to the point where you're either over dieted. You know what I mean? You sacrificed, you know, too much muscle. You came in super flat, depleted. You know. Your body's just completely shot and fatigued, or you might just come in too fat, you know, and you need to push more. So I think having that coach is as long as you can afford to do so, like a hundred percent the the smartest decision if you're trying to be your best self. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tim uh Tim pays me to say that he coaches me. I coach myself, guys. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I could never do that. I have screenshots. I got receipts. Is that yeah, what he's called? Yeah. <laughs> I got receipts. He's got receipts. Um, no, Tim, I you've been never. doing too many Instagram videos talking like that. <laughs> receipts. <laughs> put, put, some, I, put, some, put some Riz on my name. If I, oh my if, I, if, if I prepped myself, I would think I was fat, even if I was like 0% body fat. I'd be ready at 100%. 12, 12 weeks out. Yeah. I see I feel the same way but I'd probably be fat at you know two weeks out but I would still like even if I was shredded I would still think I'm fat right yep that's what I did my last prep many many <laughs> long time ago um I kept telling time like dude I'm fat you need to lower my food and he's like dude you're shredded just shut the fuck up I'm like okay should, that's cool so it's like your client um Justin oh my god is he on here I don't know <laughs> but he's funny he was like, dude, I'm at, fat. At Big Cat, dude, at Big Cat. So this kid, he looked awesome. Um, He's not. C- competitive show at Big Cat for men's physique. 
And he did like four categories and it was clear he was top two like every single time he walked out on stage. And he's like in between prejudging and, and the finals, he's like, I'm fat, I'm fat. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up, man. He asked me if he should go do cardio. And I said, dude, <laughs> did he? go to your room and shut the fuck up. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Just send me your pictures and don't talk to me. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah, I was really impressed with him. He looked really good. Yeah. And all natural too then. Yeah, yeah, and first show too. Like he really, he nailed it, man. You guys nailed it. Yeah. All right, who's next? Oh, uh, should I be next? I guess we'll do Coleman's question since he's not showing up. Um, <laughs> basal basal insulin versus metformin. I guess we probably should have added this in during the insulin conversation, yeah. huh? Back to the insulin. My bad. My bad. My last question. Basal insulin versus metformin. What's basal and insulin? Was, I don't know. There's more verbiage there. You guys know I was real late. I did fuck basal insulin, like a uh, long acting insulin. Oh. So like, like Lantus. Yeah. Yeah. Or so, again, a Novolin and whatever and covers Novolin. you over a lengthy period of time. Covers yeah. you over like 12 to 24 hours. Uh, two, two different things though, honestly. Like, I, again, I think I know his thought process there as far as like, you know, just basically managing glucose, right? But at the end of the day, it's one of those things where it's like, remember, but, insulin doesn't just manage glucose. We're talking about two different things. Metformin has different ways of impacting glucose uh, uh, uptake and glucose utilization. But we remember, we don't even know all the pathways that metformin works uh, 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 effectively, right? Like we know it works through the hepatic system in terms of reducing gluconeogenesis, the rate at which we convert other substances like protein and muscle into glucose at the time of need. Right, because your body, when you're producing cortisol, will break down muscle tissue um, or empty out liver glycogen, whatever it is, to create that glucose to feed glucose into the bloodstream. Right, so metformin can inhibit that to a certain extent, which is great for bodybuilders. Um, it can also change the gut microbiota, like we were talking about earlier, to metabolize carbohydrate more efficiently. But again, what we're looking at there is direct utilization of those carbohydrates, whereas insulin is based on storage capacity of those uh, carbohydrates. Right. Um, so a little bit of a different scenario there, right, in terms of how they work and what they do, essentially. Insulin is uh, 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 more than just glucose management. Uh, we talked about the anabolic properties of it before, the impact it has on the beta cell specifically, right? Like there's more going on there. Yeah. So, I mean, outside of bodybuilding, metformin, you use obviously like for type 2, whereas insulin type 1 and type 2, right? It's just to throw that out there too. Uh, but yeah, oh Taylor's cookies. We're coming up with a new. We're coming up with. We came out with Sammy's. When I say we, I mean we. Yes, uh, we came out with Sammy's. This is my idea, and she's trying to take credit for it. But you know, I'm I'm here to set the record straight. The Sammy's were my idea. So when you see those Oreos, uh, the cookies that she's making, I saw it. Those the I, I have the new one in my head. I came up with it post workout on my way home. I don't know if I should drop it now, though. I think I should talk to Taylor first, considering I don't know if they're actually, if you can make them or not, but they're going to be fire. Trust fuck me. Fuck it, Tim. We'll make them. All right. Taylor, oh, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. Peanut butter cookies sandwiched with Nutella in the middle. Oh. And boom, you got your next Sammy yeah. right there. Just oh, how like about that. like a, no, never mind. Nutella strawberry something or another. You know what I mean? Nutella you know strawberry. What? Don't you don't fruits don't belong in fucking baked yeah, goods. Yeah, but yeah, it can't be in baked goods. You're right. You're right. Unless it's a muffin with blueberries. I made, oh, I made I made a muffin ice cream sandwich last night. I did. I cut a cut a chocolate. Wait, what did you make? I'm sorry. I, oh, Taylor said they're I made, free. A, not I made free. a muffin uh, ice cream sandwich last night. Did you, is that on your is that on your plan from Johnny? Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, what? I'm dropping you, dude. I'm going. It, it, yeah, exactly. how many, Tim, how many times have you heard this? It's it was my cheat day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not, your, cheat not day. your cheat meal. It was my cheat day. <laughs> I've heard uh, that one before. It was my cheat meal, though. I made homemade pizza, and uh, and then I cut a chocolate chip muffin and just slammed mint chocolate chip ice cream between it. And I just ate, ate that shit was so good. Dude, I mean, yeah. it, that's just like a ball. It's not a sandwich. How'd you even eat it? Dude, I don't know. Ask Umar, bro. It was his idea, and I just followed along. <laughs> Dude, how much did you guys lunch. smoke before you did this? Oh, my God. I don't know. On Christmas Eve, though, it was a lot. It was a lot of food, though. <laughs> <laughs> Matt made me watch yeah. Matt made me watch Step Brothers for the first time high as fuck and we were like <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny <laughs> <laughs> it was so fucking funny yeah, that's funny 
right, who's next? Matt? Uh, I have a question, but it's a good one that I think we should save till next time because I'm not going to be on for much longer. Oh, all right. God damn, you should ask that one first. Way to, way to, way to ruin the mood. Yeah, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> well, let's go. Um, I mean, we could do it if you want. If you guys don't have any other good ones. I got nothing. Tim's out. Marina? I have none. Oh, shit. I have none. I only had two. I got I got two more. But man, I don't know. You kind of you kind of enticed us with this. Yeah, all right. Everybody's all like, it, Tim, Tim, it. Tim's Tim's nerd necking it. He's like right up against the screen now. <laughs> yeah, um, he's like, ask it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice. <laughs> no, uh, so sure. can can you build muscle in a caloric deficit? Who wants to go? I'll, I'll uh, give my perspective on it if if you Yeah, you gotta go. He's right. Here. Me? I guess it's a Depends, like Where's guys. Yeah, if you're on drugs, yeah. Um, but I mean, if girls are on drugs too, but I don't. It, like scientifically, no. Because how are you supposed to grow if you if you don't have enough calories to grow? But it, but people do grow in a calorie calorie deficit. So yes, I'm gonna say yes. Final I answer. I agree. I I think it's the way that your nutrition is structured. As well, yeah, yeah. Like, it's 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 like, it's are really you everything. refeeding? Are you? Oh no, Tim is brewing. Mean? Tim is brewing. I know. I feel like I feel like I did. I went too hard on the insulin thing, and like now, and and Matt just called me a nerd. So like now, I, I don't want to, you know, break it no, out. And, no, and, and be the I said guy. You were, I said you He's were insecure. nerd. Nerd, nerd necking it is like when you're playing video games and you're like this because you, uh, because you were all interested. You want to know what the question was? Uh, no, I, I like I I learn when I hear you go into all this. uh super science depth right um so i wasn't saying you're a nerd from that perspective no but i was going to say i i agree 100 right like you could have you could definitely build tissue with a deficit muscle tissue in a deficit and it's not only just for like newbie lifters right because obviously if you take somebody who's never trained a day in their life throw them in a gym give them at least a moderate protein diet and they're training correctly they're going to build tissue and, and muscle tissue and lose fat right but if you're talking about somebody even at like an advanced level um a hundred percent you can so we'll we'll just talk about peds for a moment like obviously you're going to build tissue if you're fucking six weeks out of a show and taking try and master on fucking everything else under the sun right um so that's a non-issue is there going to be like a point in time during your prep where calories are probably so low and anabolics are so high like yeah you're probably not building tissue for that period of time but all in all if you were to take you know the amount of lean body mass you have at the beginning of a prep and lean body, lean body mass you have at the end of prep. Like if you were to do a DEXA scan from start to finish um, as somebody on PEDs, yes, absolutely, you're going to build tissue. Um, and I think the same goes for naturals, so long as everything else is optimized. Obviously, the amount of tissue you're going to build is going to be far less than if you're taking PEDs. But if everything else is on point, right, you're doing your refeeds, you know, you've done the proper off season and all the good stuff you have to do before you get into a prep, um, you know, you're keeping your training uh, intensity high, you're, you're pushing as much progressive overload or, you know, mitigating as much loss and strength as you can. Um, you absolutely can gain muscle. And it's funny. So this is one that one of my buddies, I, dude, I fucking share this to everybody. Uh, one of my good buddies, Chris Barricat, he's a professor at University of Tampa. So he has access to all the training equipment, the, uh, sorry, the like lab equipment and all that stuff. Um, and he did a study with himself along with other um like bodybuilders and some collegiate athletes that all were at a you know at least moderate or elite level in terms of their physique their training and they all they gain muscle they're all natural so like again like i'm always i don't i don't live and die by the science because there are so many variables but um you know when there's good evidence and good data done by people you actually trust along with the the actual application on yourself and clients um, yeah, I, I, I agree. think you get a hundred percent build tissue in a deficit. I want to add one tiny thing to that. Like with, when it comes to like being in prep where your calories are low, you're clearly in a deficit. I think a lot of people do end up losing muscle or not growing because of that mindset shift where they're like, okay, my calories are lower. Now I'm going to get well, smaller. Now I'm, now I'm not training as hard because I'm, I don't have as much energy. Like if, if you get out of that mindset and continue to push, 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 it's going to be harder for you to lose muscle. It's going to be Easy, easier for you to to grow in a deficit if you're not in that mindset. 
What? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. No, though, you're good. But I think there's two two big things to talk about here. First and foremost is the point that it's like you know from a science perspective, like yes, it is possible. So like scientifically, yes, it is possible to grow in a calorie deficit. When you look at like what what the whole idea behind you know, growth, like we use the word growth and tissue and all this stuff. It's, it's hypertrophy, right? It's literally cellular hypertrophy. So that muscle cell is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And there's two ways that that happens, right? Through cell volumization, which is essentially taking a whole bunch of shit and shoving it in there. So the food that we eat, the amino acids, all that different stuff helps the you cell. Yeah. It's synthol. And it's true. That's actually what synthol, synthol will help with that too. Uh, but it all helps with that cellular lining expansion. Right. And we don't grow new tissue. We're growing the existing tissue that we have bigger. Right. So once we understand that that's one way that we're going to do it through the chemical enhancement, right. Which I know when we say chemical, everybody thinks drugs immediately. That's part of it, but food is chemical enhancement as well here. Right. And then the other side of that is mechanically, you know, we can grow tissue through mechanical stimulus. Right. So through training, what happens is we have actin and myosin are the myofibrils that will actually grow from the center of the cell out, right? And when they grow from that center of the cell out, sooner or later, they are going to impact the lining of the cell uh, wall, right? And cause that cellular growth and hypertrophy, right? So we can grow in a calorie deficit, just like Chris showed, um, you know, but it's one of those things where it's like, what is the deficit, which is the second thing that we have to talk about there. When the deficit gets really, really low and somebody's on 1,200 calories there, 750, the reality is their performance in the gym drops. It's not necessarily that the calories themselves aren't growing somebody, right, or aren't efficiently growing somebody. It's the fact that the calories are so low that they're negatively impacting somebody's performance to the extent which they can't progress anymore, right, or they're taking such a regression in training, right, there's going to be, you know, I don't want to say causing atrophy, but the potential for atrophy is there more than hypertrophy. Cool. Bless up. <laughs> um. The last one I had, it shouldn't be long. It's best advice you'd give someone who works a night shift for 12 hours and wants to compete. Um, so I've dealt with God, this. God bless your soul. God yeah, bless your soul. Yeah, that first. But I've dealt with this a, three times with clients. And they've, over the last few years, they competed. Um, I want to say the best thing, obviously, is make sure you have a sound sleeping schedule, first and foremost, right? Um, and then secondly, just making sure you have your schedule and routine mapped out, right? your time to sleep after a night shift, right? Meal timing and your time you're going to train and get your cardio and such in, right? Um, I would say those are like the biggest things, but it's 100% doable. I agree. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would say it's it's it's, it's definitely doable. We've, I, you know, we've seen people at a high level here recently at a national level show. Um, but the bottom line is you come out of that and there's a good chance that I, I would say you should really prioritize things at that rate. And like, is it, is it, or what are you, what are you competing for? Are you competing just to compete? Are you competing because you want a career in that, in that division? Like, is it something that's going to impact your life in some way, shape or form? Let's put it this way. If you compete and you're working a night shift like that, there's a really high chance of that, that you're going to come out of that fucked up. Your cortisol is going to be all jacked up. Your circadian rhythm's already jacked up, right? Like there's like adrenally, you're probably going to be fucked up. Like there's going to be, a, you know, your thyroid coming back is going to be that much harder. Like you're putting yourself in, you're, you're essentially putting yourself in a very high level of stress, right? Through that uh, uh, contest prep. And then you're coming out of that contest prep, asking your body to recover from that contest prep in a very high level of stress as far as your job is concerned and the impact that that job is having on your physiology. You know what I mean? So I, I would honestly tell somebody like, as it relates to competing in, you know, and, and working that night shift, it's like, you know, hey, there's going to be some individuals that have the genetic resilience to be able to handle that. But that might be, I don't know, fucking two out of five people, if I'm going to put a number on it. Those other three people probably realistically shouldn't compete if they don't want to deal with the back end problems and complications that will come up because it's it, it's defi it's it's going to happen for most people. For dude, some Tim, people. Dude, Tim, Tim was like, if you do a prep and you work overnight, the Grim Reaper will be waiting. On the other end. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I, I, you see, it's it's one of those things that it's like, it's 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 one of those things where it's 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 all fun and game until it does happen. You know what I mean? Of course. And somebody's like genetic, and they're just 
fucked. And it's like their hormones don't come back online. Yeah, their thyroid sure. doesn't come back online. It's six, seven months after that contest prep. They still haven't gotten their cycle back. And they're talking about having to do replacement therapy for their thyroid or whatever the case might be, where it like it really does become one of those things where it's like, is the fucking plastic trophy that you're going to get at Burlington fucking high school, is it worth it? Is it really yeah. worth it? You know what I mean? Dude, I don't you know. Can use that argument for so many different things in this industry. Yeah. Like one of the biggest ones is um, finances. Like you see yeah. people that will literally like sacrifice real life things for themselves their family members like fucking not paying their rent on time because they want to compete yeah, in an amateur yeah. show it's like bro like are you fucking are you fucked like yeah. you fuck? yes you are fucked yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right cool all right did we get through all the questions yes all righty thank you everyone for listening if you're on youtube or podcast or if you're on the live and we'll catch you next week later guys